The other day during one of the live streams on MikeSelsons.com, a student asked a question during the live Q&A that I've never been asked before. And they said, if you could only practice one bass drum exercise for the rest of your life, what would it be? It literally stopped me in my tracks, but I gave it some thought, and now you and I are gonna work on it together. What's up, YouTubers? Hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. As always, welcome into the first lesson of 2020. Now, before we get into the actual lesson, let's talk about the gear. Does the pedal matter? Do the settings on the pedal matter? Does the beater matter? For me personally, no. I mean, obviously there's some crazy examples of janky ass pedals that no one could possibly play. But for the most part, I really don't care. Honestly, when I'm doing clinics and traveling and stuff, I don't really get to choose the gear that I play, especially the hardware. I mean, I ask for a DW5000, but if I can't get one, I'm not gonna not do the clinic. So when I arrive to these places to do a clinic or a masterclass or even a drum festival, I just sit down and let my foot learn the pedal. And to be honest, I rarely adjust the pedal, no matter what. I, mean, I grew up in school band playing a Ludwig Speed King, which was neither speedy or kingly, so I kind of feel that my foot will eventually figure out the pedal and get used to it. That being said, if I did have to say what my pedal is set at, if zero is as loose as possible and 100 is as tight as possible, I'm probably in the 60 to 70 range as far as pedal tension. And last thing before we start the lesson, I know a lot of you are going to ask, as a DW hardware artist, why do you choose to play the DW5000 over the 9000? Isn't the 9000 better? It's not better, it's different, it's more expensive, but I don't find it to be better. The 5000 just follows my foot naturally. I feel like whatever I tell my foot to do, the pedal follows it. Sometimes the 9000 is actually a little too easy. I just spit. <laughs> <laughs> a little too easy for me and I struggle to control it. So the 5000 is that perfect balance for me. All right, so let's get into this exercise. This is the one that I would play for the rest of my life if I could only practice one bass drum exercise and it is very simple. It is a right hand lead paradiddle and we never make it all the way over to the left hand side. So instead of right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, it's just those first four notes looped. Right, left, right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, right. So let's get that down. No bass drum, just the hands. Now all we have to do is add bass drum to all the right hand hits. So this is really essentially giving us groupings of three. Dang, da da dang, da da dang, da da dang, da da dang. Let's give that a shot. Oh, by the way, when I say let's give that a shot, I mean you have to do it with me. You can't just watch the video and be like, dude, my foot feels way better than yesterday. Now why am I choosing this to be the one bass drum exercise that I would play? Doubles are great, right, left, kick, kick, right, right, kick, kick, left, left, kick, kick, and I do that a lot. Singles I do a ton, right, kick, right, kick, right, kick, right, kick, left, kick, left, kick, left, kick, I do that a ton. But we're looking for one exercise to rule them all. But the reason I'm choosing this exercise is because I've found if you can do singles, it doesn't mean you can do triples. If you can do doubles, it doesn't mean you can do triples. But when you can do groups of three or triples really easy, singles and doubles are much easier. Now once you get this exercise down, what is so awesome about it is you can start to use it as an independence exercise. Start moving that left hand through the grid. And then eventually improvise with the left hand.
practice the heck out of this thing and have a blast with it. And by the way, before I go, I just want to let you know I will be at NAMM this year on Thursday, Friday, and a little bit of Saturday. I'll be at the Minel booth showing off my new cowbell, the Minel groove bell, and I'll also be at the Gretsch booth showing off my new snare drum, the Gretsch Brooklyn Standard. So if you see me, please don't walk by and then send me a DM later being like, I saw you at NAMM. Like, stop me and say, Mike, what's up? How's it going? So I hope to see you guys at NAMM. And even if I don't, I hope you practice the hell out of this exercise, and I will see you guys next time.